part. We're going to have somebody come up here after lunch. Everybody's kind of sleepy and they're kind of like, oh, what am I doing here? Digestion time. So we're going to have a, a gentleman who has a comedy special coming up, an hour comedy special. We all need to laugh about this stuff, really, don't you think? Really? When it comes oh, yeah. Through, laugh is the best way to get through all this craziness that we, we go through day to day. So he's got a comedy special called Thinking... Crit crit critical and Thinking. Critical and Thinking. So let's give a hand to Ian Harris, ladies and gentlemen. Giving lectures isn't really necessarily in my uh, uh, my forte here, but I I've done this. I, I started giving this uh, a, this talk. Uh, I've done it a few times at a few different um, conventions and, and privately. And, and the reason is because being a comedian, I've been a comedian for 23 years, and I didn't always do comedy that <coughs> is based in skepticism, which is what I do now. I'm, I'm a skeptic. Uh, my entire life, basically, I'm. I'm consider myself uh, a skeptic, and I've been a comedian for my entire professional career. Um, but I didn't merge the two until about four or five <coughs> years ago, um, because I had taken a break from comedy, and I came back to doing stand-up comedy, and said, you know, if I'm going to come back to doing it, I'm going to do it on my terms. I'm not going to just do what <coughs> the club owners want me to do. Now, granted, that's gotten me kicked out of a lot of clubs that I used to work uh, regularly, because yeah, I get a lot of complaints. But... Um, but I got back to the comedy, so I'm going to just do what I enjoy doing, which is which is trying to make people laugh and at the same time, um, you know, open some minds and maybe change. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say change. I change minds, cause, but ultimately, when you're dealing with things that are potentially harmful, when you're dealing with the environment or you're dealing with um, you know some of these issues where anti-vaccine, you know, we're we're dealing with people, things that are. Potentially harmful, so so I do in some some ways want to change minds. But the reason I started doing this talk is because people would come up to me afterward, and we'd always get into the same conversation. There's a couple different things that happen. One, someone's on my side, but they don't like the fact that I make fun of people, which is what you know comedy's perceived as doing is that oh you're making fun of people, and they say oh well, you shouldn't ridicule, you shouldn't ridicule. You know we gotta you know if you're gonna if you're gonna make fun of things you gotta punch up. I don't know if you guys heard that that's the new yeah. phrase punch up. Which to me is ridiculous because that means you're putting yourself, you know, on a pedestal. Really, I mean, it, everyone thinks that they're being discriminated against, so you can never really punch up because Christians think they're being, you know, if I do a joke about Christianity, they think I'm punching down because they think I'm the arrogant atheist up here, you know, making fun of them because they're being, you know, persecuted. As you can tell by their numbers in America. <laughs> There's none of them left, um, and they have no control over the laws. Um, but so I don't like that term, the term, the idea of punching up, punching, because I just think it's as a comedian, it's it's um, it, you should be able to punch wherever you want to punch, and if, if you don't like me, don't have to listen to me. That's kind of how I feel. But I get that, or I get the people that come up to me after the show and they're just appalled at the stuff I said, you know, and and, and really angry and they want to have a conversation with me at, at the time, and like that. And so I started just dis discussing this. Is it is it a bad idea? to ridicule or to make fun of, which is what, again, which is what comedy is, for the most part. And I know there are different types of comedy that, you know, not all comedy, some comedy is self-reflective, some comedy is, um, you know, again, pointing the finger to other people. I believe comedy nowadays is, as Mel Brooks said, uh, in History of the World, stand-up philosophers. That's, uh, you guys ever saw that, the History of the World? Yeah. There's a moment where he goes in to get his unemployment insurance, and she says, what do you do, sir? He goes, I'm a stand-up philosopher. She goes, what's that? And he says, I coalesce the vapor of human existence into a viable and comprehensible fashion. And she says, oh, a bullshit artist. <laughs> <laughs> but then he proceeds to do stand-up comedy. And you go, oh, that's kind of what comedy is. You're, you know, you're a philosopher in some sense. And, and you look at all, co all comics are on some form skeptics. Now, they're not all free thinkers. They don't call, classify themselves as skeptics. Not all of them think skeptically. Not all of them uh, think rationally. Um, but there's a high number 
First off, there's a high number of irreligious people in comedy. Now, there's not, that doesn't mean they do a lot of non-religious comedy. There are those out there. We have the Ricky Gervais's, we have the David Cross's, we have uh, certain people who, who, who attack religion on a small scale. And everybody who does comedy in some sense, I would say, is a skeptic. I mean, even, even the old Jerry Seinfeld, why is it that you drive in a parkway and you park in a driveway? You know, <laughs> We're all going, yeah, that is dumb. Why do we call it that? And, you know, that's what it is. We're looking at life a different way. We're looking at things and saying, this doesn't make sense the way we, we, we work. This, you know, so why is that? What's the funny part of that? So I started doing comedy um, from a skeptic perspective, trying to say, okay, how can I, how can I make these, these things funny? to everybody, and at the same time, hopefully educate them a little bit, or at least get them thinking, because I don't have all the answers, but if I can get people thinking. And I found that, that the best way, in my opinion, to really get, or one of the best ways to get people to think about these subjects, like if I'm having a discussion with you one-on-one, -on -one, and you believe something that I, I believe to be a, a misinformation, and I tell you, well, that's not really the fact, I'm, I'm either a cynic or a jerk, or I'm being combative. But if I've got the mic and I'm up here and I'm just making you laugh, two things are at play. One, I'm the authority right now. So I can say whatever the heck I want to say. And aside from heckling, you can't talk back to me. So you have to be here to listen. Second of all, I'm not here to educate you or to tell you what, what you're right or wrong. I'm just here to make jokes. And if I make a joke, what I'm doing is I'm holding the mirror up to society. That's my goal, is to hold the mirror up to society, right? So what I find is when you come to any sort, and, and I say comedy because that's what I do, but this is music. I know so many people. I mean, I grew up in, the, in, San, in Santa Cruz in the Bay Area in the 80s. So I grew up punk rock kid. That was my, and I know tons of people who are now atheists or skeptics because they grew up listening to bands like Bad Religion and Dead Kennedys and these bands that were telling you, think for yourself, you know, don't listen to your parents' religion, this kind of stuff, to where they they stepped away from and took and took a look at what their society was telling them or their parents were telling them or their teachers or whoever it was. And I find that whether it's painting or, or, or poetry or comedy or music, what it allows you to do is to put forth ideas in an environment that is relaxed and our defenses are down. If you come to a comedy club, you're not there expecting a lecture. And I'm not saying I'm trying to ambush you. Like, come to my comedy club, and now you're going to hear 60 minutes of me lecturing. But I allow your defenses to come down. I allow you to laugh. And if, if during that, I challenge your beliefs a little bit, you might walk away from it going, oh, wait, I need to, I need to go look into that. And so like I said, I get people come up to me after all the time. And, and usually it's, you're wrong, blah, 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 blah. Or I get this one all the time. Ah, that's, that's pretty interesting what you said. Are you sure about that? I say, well, no, I'm not sure, but from what this research I've done, yes, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Because I heard differently. Well, here's a few things you can go take a look at. And then they go, all right, I'm going to do some reading, I'll get back to you. And I always go, that would be great. Do some reading and get back to me. They rarely get back to me. But they, every now and then they do, and they go, you know what, I did some reading, and I've changed my position. And I think my point of this whole, of, of my discussion is that I think what we don't have enough of in our community is we're perceived as, I mean, how many times you've heard it, um, you know, and I'm going to say atheism, although I, I mean skepticism, but, but you get it a lot more with religion, skepticism towards religion, because you get a lot more combativeness in, in society with that. But, and I guess around here you probably get it with alternative medicine or GMOs or these other things, because they're kind of religious they're kind of like little mini religions, right? But how often do you do, do you get this where, where you're, you know, you're um, you're combating? They, they they feel that there's there's some sort of anger involved, you know, and that, that we are just these negative, cynical people. People think skepticism and cynicism are 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 cynical, but they're, but they're they're right. They're not. It's the exact opposite. What people think? Oh, you're cynical. We both. As a comedian, that's my job. Okay, to do that. So, so I, what I, my point is that I think that we, as a group, need to find and and more outlets and encourage more people <coughs> in the arts. Mm -hmm. Now, watch TV. Okay, as a skeptic, there are conservatively 
4.7 billion TV shows about ghosts. Um, <laughs> conservatively. Conservatively. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, or paranormal. I mean, honestly, there's 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 psychic detectives and the mediums and the and ghost hunters and Bigfoot. And there's a how many other shows are there? And then what's on the other side of that? Uh, five seasons of <laughs> Is It Real and two seasons of bullshit. Brain games. Yeah, that's, that's and that's I mean that's it. How many? How many else are there? There's just not much out there. Comedians. Um, there's, like I said, there's a tons of tons of comedians out there that, that I've said that are, that are skeptics or atheists, but they do 10 minutes, you know. And there's the David Crosses, there's the Patton Oswalt, there's a few people. How many people are doing what George Carlin did and doing an hour of it's bullshit and it's bad for you? George Carlin, he's dead. So that's <laughs> what. <laughs> exactly. Um, which is funny because everyone I know who loved George Carlin, tons of people who weren't skeptics, they walked away from that one going. Ha, ah, he was so much, he's just angry now. And it's like, really, is he angry now, or did he just say stuff that you didn't agree with, you know? Um, <laughs> but so I want to share like a few a few moments of, on the road of, of what I've done that, that, that makes, that I'm, uh, what I'm getting at. A good example of, of how hard it is for people to understand, and I try to engage everybody, whether it's before the show, after the show, during the show. I was in Denver, and I did the show, um, and we, I, I always advertise on all the, all the, or put out at Facebook and meetups, and I try to invite people out. And it was a meetup group that came out. And they brought a whole bunch of people, and it wasn't specifically like a, it was just like a nightlife meetup group. It was like, oh, one of the people was a skeptic, and she said, oh, I've seen this guy before, and she put a big post. This is what he does. Don't come if this is not what you want to see. And they brought a whole bunch of people, and afterward, one of the, uh, a lady had posted. She said, well, he, I didn't really like. Him. You know, and he, I felt Ian made fun of everybody else, and I didn't like that. And the person who opened for me is a very well-known headliner in Denver, who's just a friend of mine, who normally would never open for me. His name is Chris Fonseca. Now, Chris Fonseca has been doing comedy for 30 years. He has uh, cerebral palsy. He's in a wheelchair. Very hard to understand. He talks very slow. You have to listen to him. And he does, uh, he's incredibly funny. And he does tons of jokes about how, how He's got cerebral palsy and he's also an alcoholic and it's really hard to tell the difference. No one knows, is he drunk or is he like what you know? And it's very funny and it's very good and it's all self-deprecating. And I, so I get in this discussion with this lady and she says, you know what? I just didn't like. I said, well, what did you not like about what I did? She goes, I just didn't like anything you had to say. You're just so mean. You, you, you made fun of everybody. And I said, oh, so you're racist? And she says, no. I said, why well, did 15 minutes about how racism is horrible? And she goes, oh, no, that stuff was funny. That was really funny. I go, oh, so you believe in Bigfoot? She goes, no, that's just ridiculous. Like, of course, that was hilarious, <laughs> making fun of people who believe in Bigfoot. And I go, well, so are you like, you have a house that's haunted or something? She goes, oh, no, no, that was, that was pretty good. That was silly. That was <laughs> and I go, so are you big into astro astrology? She goes, no, 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 that, oh, but that's just, come on. Nobody really believes in astrology. And, we're back. and then I said, oh, so was it the 10 minutes where I talked about religion? She goes, well... You know, I'm not really religious, but I consider myself spiritual, and I grew up as a Christian. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was really mean, mean-spirited, how you made fun of the, the Christians. I said, oh, okay. So let me get this straight. You saw half an hour of a guy with cerebral palsy and alcoholism making fun of those two things. Then you see an hour of a guy making fun of all these various topics. And out of that, you loved 50 minutes of it. And 10 minutes of it... You didn't like because it was about the stuff that you didn't, that you felt personal about. So, so basically, almost an hour and a half you loved, but the thing you don't like about me is that I can't laugh at myself. I go, well, let's see. You're laughing at all these other people. The only one that's not laughing at themselves is you. And surprisingly, she goes, oh, you're right. <laughs> Thank you. And she was cool. But it was just like, in her perception, it was that I'm this mean-spirited guy who's making fun of everybody, and, and, and that she's in the right because she can laugh at herself, because she liked the guy who's, who had because I like him because he's making fun of himself. And so you're laughing at him. And you're laughing at all these other people. And, and, and it made me realize that um, what I have to do, what I have to be more careful about, though, is that I have to make sure that I'm not making fun of the people. And this is the whole fact of punching up, or should we make, make fun of, of people, which is what happens with people always come up to me, you always see the Facebook memes, you always see people talking in discussions about you, even within our own ranks, 
there's there's dissent. You know, with with you watch people who are, what camp are you in? Do do you, do you not, now now apparently I'm not supposed to like Richard Dawkins and 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 I'm not supposed to like somebody who likes Richard Dawkins, but it's okay if we're talking about biology. You know, I, I don't know. But the whole idea, well, he said something that I disagree with, and, and he's making fun of people. And But it's like, to me, we're not making fun of people. I'm not making fun of, I'm making fun of ideas. Mm -hmm. And we choose those ideas. Let's not get it wrong. I mean, for the, for, for the most part, yeah, you may be born into Catholicism, but at some point when you become an adult, yeah, you've been a little brainwashed maybe, but you have to make a choice. We're choosing to believe in astrology. We're choosing to believe. In, and so when I'm attacking an idea, I'm attacking an idea. I'm not attacking the person. And and my, the point of what, I, what I'm getting at is that the reason I feel we need more of this type of thing, and when we're discussing it with each other, to do it from a different perspective, <laughs> something that breaks down the barrier that isn't, whether it's self-deprecating, whether it's opening up, um, talking about the ideas rather than the people, and being very clear. When I do a joke, all my jokes are formulaic, which is what I love doing these shows. I don't just do shows for skeptics. I do shows, I do a lot of shows for skeptics, but I do shows all over the country. I do shows all over the world, and I do regular audiences. I show up and they're expecting a comedian, and they don't know that it's gonna be a guy up here making fun of Jesus or whatever it is their, their thing is. But I look out in the audience, I'm up here for an hour, and I see that with that woman in Colorado. I see it. When I'm up here and I'm doing 10 minutes about Bigfoot, and 90% of the audience is dying laughing, and these 10 people are like. <laughs> <laughs> and then I do a joke about, uh, about you know, you know uh, uh, whatever, Christianity, and 90% of the people are laughing, and these people are like. Uh. <laughs> and then I do it with every single group. But what, here's what happens, again, is that most of the time, the people that are on the fence, now those people that are really angry, they're gonna come to me and go, well, I, I, I did this and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Muslim and you're you know, offensive. I can't fix them. Yeah. The people that are on the fence, the people that are on the fence come to me all the time and they say, you know, it's funny. Um, and they don't realize that as a, as a comedian, I have a, I have a joke formula. My joke is, formula is this. I always, almost every one of my jokes, you come see me, I'm just giving you my, I'm gonna tell you right now and then you're gonna see it and it's gonna bore you. Because you're gonna, oh, everything is the same formula. <laughs> Here's my formula. For the most part, I write, every comedian has their own formula of how they do jokes, okay? I always set my premise, then I make an analogy, then I act out that analogy. Sometimes it's, it's here's what happened and I act it out. Sometimes it's a conversation I had with my friend and here's the conversation and we act out, I, I, I redo the conversation. Then I'll usually do another analogy that's even more ridiculous, right? Or, or so oversimplified that it's like, you can't not get my, and, now, and then at the end, I restate my premise in a, in a, in a different way that's a punchline. And, that's, and all my jokes are that way, whether it's, again, Bigfoot, or whether it's religion, or whether it's you know, Christianity, or, or Islam, or, or, or whatever it is that I'm attacking at that moment, it's pretty much the same formula. So I get people come to me and they go, you know, it's funny. I found myself laughing at this, laughing at this. Everyone around me is laughing at all these same things. And all of a sudden, you get to this alternative medicine joke. And I think to my, and I'm looking around, and I'm not laughing, and everybody else around me is still laughing. You go, and, uh, and it made me think, why am I not laughing? Why is it that they all see are getting the same humor when it's the same formula? Uh -huh. You're making fun of, of this alternative medicine just in the same way you were talking about religion and astrology, and I laughed at those. Why did I not? What didn't I get? And I go, oh, you probably have some sort of belief mm -hmm. in that, even if you don't know it. And so often, I get people who will stop and go, and that's when I get those, oh, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to do some reading. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to go look into that because yeah, everyone else was having a great time at that joke, and I, and I wasn't, you know. And and um, where did I, I'm sorry, I'm just like rambling. <laughs> I didn't mean to ramble. Um, but I think my point is that when we talk to people, we have the opportunity to use a comedian's tools or, or to deliver our message in music, in art, in other forms, to get people to look at it and go, wow, this is an amazing painting. What's, what's the context or what's the subtext or what, what's, what is it trying to get across? And if it moves them on an emotional level, 
and then it opens up and it breaks down a wall to allow them to, to maybe have a moment of intellectual thought with it. And I find that, um, that for me, I'm a big comedy, uh, comedy junkie, like I, I've watched comedy my whole life, and I love, I love watching those moments. So I'm just gonna say a few of my favorite moments of comedy, if, if you guys, that aren't necessarily mine. But if you ask most comedians, 90% of comedians will tell you the best comedian that's ever lived is Richard Pryor. That's just, not everyone agrees with that, but if you ask comedians, all, who, who's the best comedian ever? Richard Pryor. Second would be probably George Carlin. And it's usually one and two. It's almost always. And sometimes you'll go back, some of them might say, oh, oh, Bill Cosby, or you know, whoever was before. But Richard Pryor, everyone says Richard Pryor, okay? And the thing that makes Richard Pryor so amazing, not just as a comedian, he's an amazing comedian, but Richard Pryor has one of the best anti-religion jokes that I've ever heard, and he did it in 1972. Okay, so first off, to do it in 1972 is, is crazy. To do it as a black man in 1972, <laughs> to do it as a black man in, 19, in 2016 <laughs> is tough um, because of the demographic you're speaking to. But he has this joke, he had a joke about talking about Dracula. It was a great joke about Dracula, and you know, Dracula couldn't go after a wino, because the wino would, you know, whatever. It just, this is a great joke about Dracula. And then at the end of the joke, seemingly for no reason, he goes, you know, if you, if you ever do run into a vampire, you gotta show him a cross. Did you know that? We got the audience with the yeah, because apparently vampires are allergic to bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great wording, by the way. Allergic to bullshit. Uh, incredible way of putting that. Um, <laughs> and then the, the other thing is another. Oh, here's another great. Another great one. Uh, you guys know Bill Hicks, comedy aficionados. You know, Bill Hicks is another one of these guys that died at 32 of pancreatic cancer. Um, and another one of these guys that just wasn't famous in his time, was famous among comedians, but now is famous because how much, he's kind of a Lenny Bruce type, how much he pushed the envelope, how much, he came from Texas, and came from a rel religious family, and and just was way ahead of his time, and got kicked out of so many clubs, never never uh, wavered from what he was doing. If he, he would go into a regular club, and he would get booed out, and thrown off stage, and didn't care, just kept coming back, and and again, at the time, was way underappreciated. So many clubs are like, oh, that guy, he comes in here, he thinks he's smarter than everybody else. And now people listen to him and they go, wow, this guy was amazing. But he had a great joke about doing, he, doing a, he did a, a, a joke about, you know, something about religion in his act. And, and he says, uh, you know, I did that joke uh, a couple weeks ago in, uh, in Texas. And afterward, these rednecks came up to me and they go, hey, man, we didn't like that. The joke you did about Jesus. We're Christians. And that offends us. I said, oh, you're Christians, huh? He goes, yeah, we're Christians. Said, oh, forgive me. He <laughs> <laughs> was later when I was hanging from the tree. <laughs> but the point is that he wasn't hanging from the tree. Right? Richard Pryor is still considered the greatest comedian of all time, and, and especially in the, in the black community. I mean, every black comic, especially that you talk to, Richard Pryor is his idol. And Richard Pryor had tons of those subversive moments. I mean, of course, George Carlin, we know that's what he was. George Carlin didn't start out that way, of course. He started out doing all kinds of stuff, impressions and characters and all kinds of different things and radio bits and eventually got more and more um, skeptical and more subversive over the time. But the point is that those you people will... you. You're okay. It's okay. There are people, no, one, no one walked away from Richard Pryor. And if anything, somebody who was kind of on the fence went, oh, shit, Richard Pryor? Richard Pryor thinks this is all bullshit, too. This is safe. It's safe for me to laugh at this. And it's safe for me to, to, to I see I've got a little tribe. I can look around and see who's, who's laughing. And, and I've got a little tribe. But I think, um, I think that's, that's my, my point, again, trying to get to um, a point where we can where we have this discussion, and, and I also believe that we were talking earlier about the internet, so many great jokes are appearing now on memes, or as I call them, studies. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody I talk to goes, I saw this study where, and I go, 
Oh, you mean you saw a Facebook meme that said McDonald's is made of asbestos? Okay, uh, that's a study. That's a Facebook meme. But that is our, we can change. The, I have two face, two t-shirts and Facebook memes and stuff that I'm not attributed to of jokes that I did over 20 years ago, back when I wasn't doing what I did now. And one of them was, oh, I did a show on Easter, and after, after, and nobody had said this, and people thought I was crazy. And I got booed, and I got yelled at, and whatever. But on Easter, I said, I opened my show with Happy Zombie Day, everybody. And this is 1993, okay? Way before. And I said, Happy Zombie Day, everybody. And everybody goes, everybody's looking around at Zombie Day. I go, Zombie Day. This is the day Jesus came back from the dead and has been eating brains ever since. <laughs> now Zombie Jesus is a thing. Like, people have Zombie Jesus t-shirts. And it's Zombie Jesus. And it's like, that's part of our, 20 years later, that's part of our lexicon. It's the Zombie Jesus. He's a zombie. He came from the dead. At some point, I did that as a joke, you know. Um, there's a I have a joke about eating, eating about people seeing the imagery in in, in stuff, and I call in, in uh, you know pancakes and whatever. And I did a joke. I said I'm never gonna be I'm never gonna be uh, convinced by by a grilled Jesus. Oh. <laughs> I've been doing that joke for 20 years. Now grilledjesus.com is somebody's website. Oh. <laughs> So we can change uh, we can change things. And if, if you want, if, if, if you're cool, can I tell one of my bits? Of course. Or we do yeah. I don't know how much time I have. Good time. Okay. <laughs> I know I just saw too. So here, here's one of my bits that, that this is this is one that, that I I do I don't always do my atheist bits when I do regular shows, but I close my special with this because it's a really heart like a fun little heartfelt story and it's 100% true, 100% true, almost word for word. Um, and I tell the story in regular audiences, and even the regular audiences have to come up and go, wow, that was, that was pretty funny. And it's not a joke, it's not a punchline. You can't go tell this joke, really. It's a true story that happened to me and, my da- me and my, my daughter, who's now 10 going on 11. She was six when I wrote this joke. We were doing a, uh, I was trying to come up with material for my special, okay? Um, and I was writing all this material, I was just trying to just write as much material as I could, and I came up with this idea that I wanted to do a bit about original sin. And the, the joke, of original sin, yeah, I'm over, huh? No, that's fine. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, it's only two minutes. So, <laughs> the joke was, I said, I want to do something about the concept of original sin. And um, what can I do that hasn't been done, right? And so I, I was just beating myself up for six months trying to write a joke. And every time I'd write a joke, I had to, it's not funny, it's not working. Got to put this. There's so much material here. i got to write a joke about it. So I'm on the phone talking to another comedian friend of mine. And my phone's on speakerphone in the car. My daughter's in the back. She's six years old. And I'm trying to ask him, hey, you got any ideas for this? Like, here's here's a concept. And he's like, I don't know. It's not funny. Hang up the phone. My daughter goes, Dad, what's original sin? And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. I explained it to her because she's no idea what the hell I'm talking about. She's never, I've never, she never even talked to her about the Bible or any of this stuff. She doesn't know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So I said, it's not going to, it's going to be impossible for me to explain this to you because you don't know the characters in the Bible. She goes, well, can you try? I said, look, I'll give you an analogy. She said, fine. I said, all right, you know how I see <laughs> I said, you know, I say, don't put your fingers in your food. She goes, yeah. I said, I right, pretend I'm God, and uh, which to a six-year-old, pretty much is, uh, uh, yeah. I am yeah. God. Um, I said, pretend I'm God, and pretend I say, I say, don't ever put your fingers in your food again. And if you do it, the next time you do it, I'm gonna punish you and everybody else on the planet by punching them in the face. <gasps> she goes, okay. A couple weeks go by, and you put your fingers in your food, and I go, oh, I told you, I warned you not to put your fingers in your food, and now I have to punch everybody in the face. So that's what I do. I just start walking around there, punching people in the face. People are like, ah, oh, why are you punching me in the face? I'm like, I'm punching you in the face because she put her fingers in her food. That's called justice. And I just start punching people in the face. And I'm walking around the earth and I punch people in the face. And finally, after a, a couple of thousand years or a, you know, a few million, depending on whose book you read, uh, <laughs> I think to myself, I'm being a tad bit irrational here. Um, so I'm going to have another child, uh, this time a son, and I'm going to punch him in the face. And, uh, and that's what I do is I have this baby and I punch the baby in the face and I'm just walking around punching. People are appalled as they should be. They're like, why are you punching that baby in the face? I'm like, I'm punching this baby in the face because otherwise I'll have to punch you in the face because she put her fingers in her food, right? And my daughter gets saying to me, she goes, Daddy, stop it. <laughs> okay, stop it. This is ridiculous. This is silly. Could you please just tell me what happened? Can you tell me the real story, this original sin thing? I said, fine. God creates these two people, Adam and Eve, and he puts them in this, this, this garden, and he says, don't eat this fruit from this tree of knowledge. It's the, it's, we can't have you thinking or learning, so do not eat anything from this tree of knowledge. And if you do, I'm going to punish you and everybody else by sending them to hell for all eternity. 
a little while goes by and Eve eats the fruit and God goes, <laughs> I told you not to eat the fruit. And now I'm going to have to punish you and everybody else and they're going to have to burn in eternal hellfire. And, and that's it. And, and sorry, and that's what he does. You're born, sorry. It's original sin. You're going to hell. You're born, you're going to hell. You're born, sorry. She ate the fruit. You're going to hell. And after a couple of thousand years or a few million, depending on whose book you read, uh, God says to himself, I might be being a tad bit irrational, so I'm going to have another child, this time a son, <laughs> and murder him. <laughs> so that you don't have to go to hell because this girl ate some fruit. And at that point, my daughter gets angry at me. She goes, Daddy! Stop it! Quit joking around and tell me the real story. <laughs> and I just looked at her and I go, you know, baby girl, that is the appropriate response, right? <laughs> and the funny thing about that story is that, like I said, it's 100% true. And to us, we think, oh, that's silly, that's hilarious, whatever, that's funny, it's goofy, it's whatever you think it is. But that's absolutely true, that my daughter at six years old could not discern the difference between this ridiculous story that I made up on the spot and this other ridiculous story. And she thought, I, Dad's a comedian, he must be making up these two ridiculous stories to mess with me. Like, no one could possibly believe either one of these stories. And a six-year-old. It's like, come on, you're shitting me. Not either. And, and, and it's funny, so I tell that story, and, and, and again, to people who, who, at the end of my act, and then I get to finally get to that bit, and I've talked about my daughter and all that, people love that bit. And when you're religious, you come to me and you go, oh, that's, uh, that, was, that was a pretty cute story there. <laughs> but every single time I get somebody to, 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 make a, to want to talk to me, want to ask me, do I, did my daughter really say that? Do I want to, you know? You know, I, I've had that conversation with my kid, and I'm a believer, and I just don't know what I mean. Yeah, because it's bullshit. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> now you learn, too, from your own kid. Okay? So, anyway, I, that's where, that, that's my my, uh, my talk, I guess, is, um, I don't know if that makes, no, <laughs> there's, there's not much ending to it. I don't know if there's any, if I have time, or if there's any questions. Or, yeah, a couple uh, questions. We, we, we ran on time all day today, so just a couple. Go ahead and ask him. You can mod them later. Uh, I don't know what the reference is when you say Jesus was eating brains. Oh, just that people are mindless followers of... He's been eating in our brains ever since, meaning that he is... People are mindless followers to something, I okay. guess. I'm just kind of interested. Uh, do you have any skeptics jokes? Uh -huh. Jokes about skeptics. Yes. You know, it's so funny that you say that. I, I would... The only time I've, I've ever been stumped was when I did the, I did like a 45 minute version, which is why I was trying to pare this down. By the way, the, the original one is, goes way deeper. Uh, but I did like a long version of this talk in uh, in Chicago, and the guy asked me, "Can you tell us a joke about atheists?" And I went, oh "God, I have no jokes about atheists." <laughs> you know, and it's the funny thing. I, I I think that I I don't have any any specific jokes about skeptics. Um, I think because I don't know I, I don't know where the where the humor is in, <laughs> in, in that sort of thing. <laughs> in, in a way that just kind of twists it around like those people that don't get that five percent yeah. five minutes of the joke you're telling, but we're all that, that way. It's just all human nature. You know, it's it's funny like you have to make fun of yourself and I and when I do regular shows, the first fifteen or twenty minutes of my act is autobiographical, making fun of myself, making fun of my upbringing. Um, and I get into it by saying I used to believe in luck, and I do a joke about how I used to believe in luck, and and I thought the luck was tied to my white trash upbringing, and, and I was always going to have the world against me, and that was what I thought as a kid, and that's how I get into the skepticism part. But I have to do that. I can't go right into uh, without doing some sort of self-deprecation in a regular show. I can't. I can't do it because all, otherwise people automatically perceive me as making fun of them. When I'm making fun of their ideas, and I don't know which ideas everyone in the room believes. So if I make fun of 30 ideas, I'm sure to hit one of them that you believe, you know? So, but yeah, I do need, I should, if, if you know any good skeptic jokes, please throw one on me, because I should have one that I can, uh, that I can throw out there. Uh, you could probably get some from a Christian. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have plenty. Yeah, no, I actually watched. I did. I did. Uh, I, did uh, I don't know if you guys, who, who knows Emory Emory, but uh, I did yeah, Emory yeah. Emory's podcast many times. But one time, he brought me on specifically because he had this very famous to the Christian community Christian comedian on Brad, Brad something or other, um, Brad Stein I think. He said you gotta have, you gotta come on because Brad Stein's gonna be on here and. 
and I went and watched his comedy. And again, I just, I guess, I just don't get it. But it was just like, it was that kind of thing where it's, he was, he was, atheist, believe, uh, you know, and he was saying stuff that, yeah, yes, Not and, him. yes, and, but, <laughs> and people are dying laughing. I'm like, that's funny. I mean, that's funny. That's true. Yes, that's crazy that you believe the world's six thousand years old. Hey, these people believe the world's like millions of years old. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd's laughing. I'm going, Carlin went through a period where, as he put it, he tried to believe in God. In fact, I remember watching his sitcom. Uh, he had a sitcom at that era of his life, and I remember periodically they'd make references to God. And but he dropped that later in life. So, do you know much about that, and you know why he went through that period and why he abandoned it? You know, I, I think. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I don't. I've only met him a handful, uh, a small handful of times, and I've only met his daughter a couple of times. Um, but other than what's what's publicly out there, I, I think that the thing about George is that he was, he was, even though he wouldn't have necessarily called himself a skeptic at least at the time, he was kind of a true skeptic in in the sense that he he was very open minded, I should say, and he was very into that whole you know he he kind of came out of the whole hippie. Mind expansion, did a lot of drug, did a lot of different things like that, and he was really open-minded. And I think his thing was, I can't throw it out until I've at least tried it. Otherwise, it's dishonest. And I think that was part of his whole experience was he did everything. I mean, that's where humor comes from. Look at again, Richard Pryor. He's been addicted to drugs. He's caught on fire. He's had three heart attacks. He's been married eight times. I mean, it's like you look at this life experience, and I think sometimes you can't have those jokes if you don't have the experience and I think sometimes I think if anything with George it was partly probably partly this you know I, I'm trying to expand my mind and see what I'm missing you know and a little bit left over the 60s kind of hippie thing like what, what's out and then also it was well I can't say it does it's not there if I haven't given it a, a, the old college try kind of a thing and I think that's probably mostly what that was but yeah he quickly said no this is ridiculous the paradox of Bill Maher kind of bothers me at times. He's so great on religion, yet he seems to be into alternative medicine. Yeah. And so disappointing. He's yeah. semi-anti-vax. Yeah. He's and only I anti-vax with the that. flu shot. No, no. I think he's. I think he's changed actually on that. I like that. You know? But yeah, he, but that's the thing he's is involved. we have to remember. And again, Emory Emory, taught, we talked about this one time. He's, you, you, you go. We as and I don't say all of us. I'll say me, and I know many other skeptics. We kind of have this idea that everybody, and I mean it's the human condition, that we that we all kind of get to an area the same way. Mm-hmm. So Emery was saying he was at a party, it was like an atheist party at Atheist United at CFI LA, and he was talking to a guy who was an atheist, and he was talking about being an atheist. And the guy said something about blah, 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 and then when the aliens come back, <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, I had realized not everyone gets to atheism via right. skepticism. <laughs> <laughs> so you can be an atheist yeah. and not be a skeptic. And you can be a skeptic and not be an atheist. Although that, but, if you're not, but you don't have to apply it, and, and not everyone gets to. So I think Bill Maher is an atheist. He's an atheist and he's a skeptic toward religion, but I don't think he began as a skeptic. I think he began as an atheist. And now I think he's starting <laughs> to become more. Skeptical, but but the other thing is, so many religious people, so many people that were formerly religious, they haven't got rid of religiosity. They haven't got rid of their religious leanings. I know, again, I'm from Santa Cruz. I know of everybody in my life, pretty much, is not religious, but they were raised religious, and now they're religious about the GMO thing, or they're, it's like, what's on that label? Oh, okay, if it's not organic, their, their, their religion is their food, their religion is their kid, their religion is. They're religious about other things, and they haven't shed that mindset. They're not really looking at things skeptically. They've just realized this, my parents' religion is ridiculous, and I don't like it, I'm throwing it away. But they haven't really, and I think that there's a little bit of that with Bill Maher, where he came quickly to, come on, and you all, he always points back to the, to the original sin. He always says, a talking snake and a prayer, come on, that's ridiculous. And it might have been as simple as that that made him go, this is insane, a talking snake. Yeah. But it doesn't take a lot of skepticism to go, a talking snake, please. It doesn't take a lot of skepticism. It does, you know, it does take more skepticism on some of these other issues. You know. I, I'd like to think of it as we're all on a journey. 
Yeah. You know, we're all coming at it from different areas, and we're still some people still haven't quite gotten to that part yet. Yeah, and that's why that's why I was saying like when I started this, the only I, normally I do stand up as you can tell by my disjointed talk, but um, but the reason that I I wanted to do this is because I always get into this discussion with people where it's where it's, so many people come up to me and they say. I didn't used to be an atheist, and then I heard this song. I didn't used to be a skeptic, and then I saw this comedian. I saw this. I read this poem. If you ever read it, it just that made me start mm -hmm. questioning. I, I heard Tim Minchin's "Storm" mm -hmm. beat poem and said, "Wow, that's so great. That's so clever." Wait, so people think water has memory? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> so one more. One more. Oh, she more. Okay. I just wanted to say, if you check out that book I mentioned, "Science is a Sacred Cow." I think there's a lot of sarcasm in it, and you'll probably find material you can turn into skeptic jokes. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, let's do it again.